Day 1 on Aberration, or day 301 in my 10 part series to be all Arc Story maps in a thousand in game days. So make sure to go watch the previous 3 videos multiple times to give me more ad revenue. Recap the series for yourself so you know what's going on. Anyways, moving on, I spawned in Fertile Lake 2, a supposed easy zone. Hi, how are you? No. But before I spawn back in for round 2, I think I'll play some Raid Shadow Legends first. Raid Shadow Legends is a revolutionary game with over 80 million downloads, so if you don't already have Raid, you're missing out. Raid Shadow Legends features some, if not the most, action-packed gaming experience around right now. You can head into the dungeons to face off against many deadly bosses, and you can scale the many floors of the Doom Tower, or jump into many different fights with other players in Faction Wars. But my favorite element is the huge bosses, they're always super challenging and keep me on my toes, and the rewards for defeating them are invaluable to upgrading my champions. But it's not just the same old, same old for Raid right now. Raid is currently running a Christmas event celebrating the 12 days of Raid, and all you have to do is download Raid Shadow Legends from my link below, copy your player ID, and then go to the link on the screen or in description. And if you do this, you can experience a new chapter of a winter story and have a chance to win in-game and real-life prizes. But that's not all. A new legendary champion was just released, Ronda Rousey. Wow. Yeah. Her. All you have to do to get Ronda Rousey right now is log in between now and February 28th for 7 days in a row and Ronda's yours. So once again head down to the link in the description or scan the QR code to get this free starter pack with all this loot on screen and download Raid today. Well let's try that again. I spawned in Fertile Lake 2 again but this time I didn't instantly die so already off to a better start. And I quickly got to crafting a pickaxe, hatchet, and spears to then quickly eliminate a few lysers and tame a bulldog which I named Chonker. With my track record of keeping shoulder pets alive I'm guessing there will be at least 5 different Chonkers in this video. Anyways, I killed a few more small surrounding dinos and crafted myself a set of hide armor, as this map is not blazing hot like Scorched Earth. And I also got myself some bolas along with a bow and put the glowing eye skin on Chunker, so now he looks like he either has laser eyes or is on crack. So yeah, speaking of drugs, I'm gonna have to constantly eat mushrooms in this video because right I now, tend bro? to walk in those hallucination patches quite a lot. Well, now I've made it to day two relatively unscathed. Anyway, it's time to get myself a mount, as running around on foot is just asking to get eaten by raptors again. So I managed to get myself up on a cliff and crafting myself a parachute, and then jumped off to get a lay of the land, and I found myself a level 150 Ooh. stego that'd be a great berry farmer and tank for me to ride on. So I decided to set up a makeshift base against a large rock wall, as well as making a stone trap to tame the stego with. And as I was making the stone trap, I spotted a pack of ravagers, with a level 138 being the alpha, which I now have to tame. So I completed the trap and led the ravager inside, but I didn't have enough trink arrows at the moment, because I was going to use a normal bow to knock it out because I didn't really have that much metal yet. So the rest of day two was spent farming narcotics for trank arrows. I had the ravager knocked out in the early morning of day three. I then set out to look for an ovis for mutton to tame it but I didn't find any. So I ended up just killing a diplo for prime meat as well as gathering metal and spotting a max level stego. That is 30 points better than the 150 so uh yes. Anyways the ravager tamed and I named him a green lantern and I also had a smithy and forge by now to craft the saddle. And now I want to tame that stego so it's time to farm for some more narcotics. Day 4 I had all the trank arrows I needed, and I had metal tools and a crossbow, so tranking out the stego shouldn't be too bad. I trapped the stego using a few wooden billboards, and it just got done finding a raptor before I knocked it out, so I half thought it was gonna die, but it ended up knocking out okay. But then it took the whole day to tame, because it needs around 17,000 mayo berries, and I didn't put enough in its inventory, so I basically had to restart. What? Well, day five, the stego was tamed and it was absolutely terrible, but at least I'll be able to farm some berries. But more importantly, while I was waiting for the stego to tame, I looted an immaculate purple drop. So anyways, I got my stego back to my base and farmed even more narcotics with it because you can't fly on aberration and everything can get you. So I decided I wanted a small army of dinos before I moved from my current base. And once I had enough trank arrows to probably tame another ravager or carno or just something, I ventured a little upstream, but a pack of raptors found me first. Dude. 
and my Ravager ended up dying, but I managed to get my stuff back, and my Boob Dog, who somehow didn't die. So for the rest of the day, I knocked out a low-level Raptor, Scorpion, and another Ravager, because any mount is better than no mount. But don't get too attached to the Raptor or Scorpion. What? They died almost immediately after I tamed them, because I was preoccupied taming a level 120 Carno, which almost definitely will keep me safe. And I also tamed another low-level Raptor that was nearby. And when I returned back to my base, I made a Carno saddle and healed up my Carno next to one of those sus-looking plants. And after that, I pre-crafted myself a few things I could use in my new base and set off to look for a new place to live with my gang. And I know I've only been in the starter location for a few days, but there's almost no metal around. And on a map where you have to walk every dino back and forth, walking 7 miles with a full inventory of metal isn't exactly ideal. Day 7 started out with my gang murdering a rat because I wanted a few of the red gems at dug up. But I also spotted level 138 megalosaurus I thought Bro, was stuck. Is it stuck? This could be the freest megalo of my life. Oh. Megalos are pretty much the Rexes of Aberration, and I plan to use a small army of them to get myself some rock drake eggs. But while I crafted a few more drake arrows I needed to tame the megalo, I actually found out it wasn't stuff. Oh no, it's out! So I now actually have to farm a trap. Bro went into the back rooms. Anyways, my trap is made, and it's time to tame that megalo. <laughs> Well, it actually is stuck now, so I knocked it out, and while it was taming, I spotted a max level Ravager. Looks like Ark is trying to be nice to me after screwing me over a few days ago. Day 8, I actually had to farm some crystal and kill a Carquinos for some polymer to craft a cryopod because my Megalo tamed, but it was legitimately stuck in unbreakable rock, so I'd have to cryopod it to get it out. But now that I tamed the Megalo, it's time to tame that level 180 Ravager, which I actually managed to get into the trap. And I had to farm a few more Trank arrows since it was such a high level, but it ended up knocking out okay. Oh my god, I miss these things. And yeah, my Megalo came out really good. The Ravager took a little bit to tame on day 9, so I went around killing a few things with my Megalo. But after it tamed, I packed up once again, and me and my now small, strong army of dinos set off into the blue zone to look for a new base location. And going off what I said earlier, how the starter base wasn't near any metal, that stands true for basically the whole green zone. The blue zone is much more dangerous, but it has a lot more resources. And maybe if I can find a semi-secluded or block off a portion of land, I should be safe. About a quarter of day 10 was spent wandering around the blue zone, but eventually I found this cliff thing on one of the large rock pillars. It only had two land entrances and was surrounded by water, so I thought it was a safe enough place as any to build my base. So the rest of the day was spent building the actual base. I went for a 5x5 platform on pillars because there wasn't a super flat place to build, but it didn't turn out too bad, I don't think. Day 11 started with placing campfires so I can finally have some more cooked meat, and I then started to fill my 10 refining forges with wood and metal. I got about 300 raw metal into each forge before I crafted a set of flak armor and then placed down some mortar and pestles, because it's time to refocus on taming. Day 12 and mass crafting narcotics have never been easier in the primitive the stage because of the stego I tamed. I wanted to craft trink darts to start taming stuff because I planned to craft the long knife blueprint I got from a drop a few days ago. So I also began to farm gunpowder for the rifle bullets then turn into trink darts. And I had the long neck crafted by about Ben Day and I set out on my megalo to look for a high level Ankleo tame. And I guess it's my lucky day because I found a level 174. I got the Ankleo knocked down in the morning of day 13 and I put spikes around it to protect it. And while I was wandering around waiting for the Ankleo tame I found another male megalo level 144. And I had enough trink darts and trink arrows to knock it out so I made another trap and then knocked it out. Then quickly after my Ankleo tame and later on so did the Megalo. I got my new tames back to base on day 14 and I developed a way of farming where I rode my Ankleo around farming the metal and I had my Ravager whistle to follow me and hold the metal. And if you didn't know Ravagers do have weight reductions on certain materials so they're kind of like the RGs of this map. Anyways after a few trips I got three stacks of metal into each forge and towards the end of the day I set back out towards the green zone to look for a Dodic to tame. It took about half of day 15 for me to find a Dodic worth taming. Looking for dinos to tame right now is really slow because I have to move at snail speed running around all over the map. I cannot wait till I have a rock drake. And the dodic wasn't that great or anything, but it'll farm me stone just fine. And well, I was making my way peacefully back to my base with my newly tamed dodic, but then Ark remembered that it's Ark. Well, I managed to get my stuff back on day 16, and luckily my Ravager survived, but Chonker did not. So I tamed Chonker 2 and 3 on the way back to my base, just to be prepared for the imminent death of number 2. Anyways, when I got back to my base, I farmed a bit of stone with my new Dodic, and then placed another Smithy down, and then a Fabricator. And my current way of farming is pretty inefficient, to be honest, so it's time to tame a Carquinos. Carquinos can pick up dinos with their claws, so it makes farming much, much easier. So I spent the rest of the day farming the traps, which is kind of complicated. Day 17, I was out in the green zone, and I found a level 174 Carquinos. So I set 
set up the trap and got it ready to tame just to realize I forgot the catapult. You know, the thing that knocks the crab out. But it all doesn't matter because when I tried to return to my base to get the catapult, my game crashed. I love spending thousands of dollars on my PC just for my game to crash. I only got put a few minutes back to where I was before the crash, so I turned to my base and grabbed the catapult. I managed to get back where I was before I crashed and started to build the trap, but as I was, the crab already walked in and I thought it was stuck. But I would soon learn when I was trying to knock it out, it was indeed not stuck. What? And it was no nope. poor running by now, so there's no way I could get it back in the trap. And I tried to get another high level back oh, into the oh, trap, oh. but since Carquinos have some of the worst AIs in the game, it didn't work out. And day 18 was pretty much one big failure. Day 19, and I actually got the crab into the trap. Oh! Oh! It might actually be in. I don't even know what level it is, to be honest, but just know that it's bad. And it only took a few minutes to tame eating spoiled meat. But then it takes about 10 minutes to get back to my base since I have to walk. Pretty much the story of my life on Aberration. Farming is a breeze with my new crab. It was a real pain to tame, but it was so worth it. And I farmed a metric butt ton of cementing paste and crystal. Because you should all know by now, I want that industrial forge. And I only had some slight trouble getting the crystal back to my base. No! I'm getting pretty close to being able to craft an industrial forge. The only resource holding me back right now is oil. And the only way I believe you can get oil on this map, besides farming it on the surface, is by killing trilobites. So I made my way to a river in the green zone, which has a bunch of trilobites, and I slaughtered them all. It took basically the whole day, but I got more than enough oil, and some silica pros too. Day 22, and I crafted the industrial forge. My metal production is going to be insane now, especially on this map. And after spending some time destroying the old forges and placing the new one, I did a massive stone run to craft some more stone structures. I was going to build a a bottom level to my base where I was gonna hatch baby dinos. Day 23 started with me adding some stairs so I could easily move between the crafting floor and the lower hatching floor. After that I quickly made my way across a land bridge to the mainland and killed a Carquinas for more polymer to craft an industrial grill. And after that I made a preserving bin because I'm still too poor to craft a fridge. And to end off the day I wanted climbing picks in case I found myself in a bad situation so I ran out to the green zone to farm some green gems. I had a lot of charcoal from using so many wood burning forges for so long. And with charcoal and spark powder you can craft gunpowder which I'm gonna need a lot of to craft shotgun bullets so I can kill off a of Rockwell. So I did a big flint run and began mass crafting spark powder. Moving on, I've been grinding for a while now and I think it's time for a little adventure. Specifically an adventure into the Gloto Cave for an artifact. And the cave was pretty uneventful because it's stupid easy on the back of a Megalo. I obliterated literally everything in my path except when an Arthro broke most of my armor. It took me over half of the day to get back to my base on day 25. But I spotted an Alpha Carquinos just before I walked into my base so obviously I killed it because I needed his claw to start the Alpha Rockwell boss fight. And I finished the day by doing a thick metal run. The entire of day 26 was just spent crafting behemoth gates and spike walls to completely isolate myself from the outside world. No wild dinos are getting into my base. Day 27, I saw time to craft a chemistry bench to make things like crafting gunpowder much more easier. So I had to do a little bit of crafting, but by the end of the day, I had my chemistry bench and a generator to be able to turn it on. I made another trip up to the Trilobite River on day 28 for some more oil. I also don't know when, but I crafted a gas collector at one point. Hey, and don't get mad at me for not showing it. He tried sorting through hours of footage for multiple videos in a row. Turns out I made the gas collector on day 26. Moving on, day 29, I basically finished the bottom level of my base and then killed another Carquinos. And just like that, I have four vaults. Wood farming is still a struggle for me. This metal hatchet just doesn't cut it anymore, so it's time to tame a rat. But to tame a rat, you need honey. And honey comes from beehives, which took me a whole day to find, but I find a high-level rat right next to it, and I named it Biggie Cheese. It took me a little while to get back to my base on day 31, but when I did, I crafted the insanely expensive roll rat saddle and began farming wood with it. And it's safe to say the roll rat was a really good investment, and I used most of the wood to burn into charcoal for gunpowder. And after that, I farmed a little bit of stone and crafted a ravager trap because I want a dude ravager so I can have little baby rat dog things. It took basically the whole day, but I found a level 180 male ravager. I told you looking for dinos to tame is slow right now. Anyways, the ravager nearly died before I could tame it, but I managed to get in the trap and it knocked out, so it's fine. The ravager tamed pretty early in the morning of day 33, and when I returned to base, I got them breeding, and not too long after, I had a little red rat dog thing. Oh, and did I mention the Christmas van was active? the whole time I was recording this. I mean, it's probably obvious by now, but whatever. My Ravager was fully grown on day 34, and it was nice being a little bit faster with 100% imprint. So I spent the rest of the day running around the blue zone looking for another Megalo to tame so I can finally start my Megalo line. And again, it took me basically the whole day of day 35, but I did find a level 150 Megalo, and that's good enough for me, so it shall be mine. 
the Megala took about half of the day to tame. So now that I have a breeding pair, it's time to make some air conditioners so I can actually hatch the eggs. I placed around 10 air conditioners down and hatched the first Megalo egg and it came out as a perfect male. And while the Megalo was growing up on day 37, I crafted and placed a turret on a pillar. I haven't really been showing it at all, but random dinos keep falling into my base and attacking my dinos. And after killing about 17 Titana boas, I was pretty over it. But yeah, now my Megalo is fully grown, so I spent some time running around and killing everything in my path. And now that I have all the Megalos I need, I need to start crafting hazmat gear to be able to get myself some rock drag eggs. Looks like I have to do some good old fashioned grinding. So yeah, if you don't know what just happened, my power shut off. Well, I should only be a few days back, so it won't be too bad. Nope, my character got deleted. And I'm not gonna lie, this was the closest I've ever been to putting a hole in my wall. And I never created a tribe, so I couldn't get my stuff back or my dinos back. So as bad as it is, I had to delete the world and create a new one. I built my base again and spawned a dinos that had stats close to the ones I had. And I also gave my character the island ascension, but I couldn't figure out how to get the kills for the dragon, monkey, spider, or manticore. So basically, I had no tech engrams, and I'm missing a whole ascension. I mean, I can live without attacking grams for now but on extinction i'm definitely gonna need those so if you guys know any admin commands that can help me make sure to put them in the comments anyways day 46 through 49 i spent re-raising five megalos and leveling them back up so i can use them in the rock trick then and they will get clapped instantly also i don't have any resources now because i didn't think i could really spawn them in so i'll have to refarm them at some point as well as refarm boss tributes but i actually managed to find and kill an alpha carquinos on day 49 so luckily i got that back day 50 and i have five fully grown and level megalos so it's time to get some rock trick eggs but from my base to the drake then it's a very far walk especially when i had to stop and heal up my dinos so it took the whole day just to even get to the radiation zone day 51 i didn't find any good drake eggs i didn't get any good eggs on day 52 either but since i have three hazmat suits i can basically live down here but day 53 i got my grubby little hands on a level 102 egg now that's not really good or anything but it's high enough level where i should be able to safely come back down to the den and search for more better eggs i got back to my base on day 54 and wanted to hatch my drake egg but like wyverns rock drakes need almost thousands of air conditioners to consider hatching so i had to farm some more polymer metal and crystal but hey i managed to craft a fridge and another singular air conditioner i needed more electronics to craft air conditioners and i didn't have any anglerfish to farm silica pearls so i ran around killing tech dinos for a little bit and towards the end of the day i still did not have enough air conditioners to hatch the rock drake egg but no worries because i had enough to hatch the egg on day 57 and i even tried to get some nameless venom to raise it but i couldn't get any anyways the egg hatched and it had some pretty good colors and i spent the rest of the day at my base to make sure i could get the imprint day 58 i'm gonna be honest i had no idea what I was doing. I was just wandering around on my Megalo and I got red gems. I guess I was probably out looking for red gems then. I would make a rock drag saddle. Yeah, that makes sense. Day 59 and my Rock Drake is fully grown, and yeah, I'm happy to finally go fast again. And I'm not gonna lie, I spent the whole day flying around because it was so fun. Day 60, I was back in the Drake Den looking for a better Rock Drake egg. And luckily, I found a level 192 egg after only a few bad ones. So I had the egg, and oh my god, I got twins. And I named them after a certain college football team I don't exactly like because sadly, they had the exact colors of the school. Day 61 was primarily spent raising my two Rock Drakes and cleaning up some stuff around the base. But when my Rock Drakes were fully grown, I once again had a field day flying around and leveling them up. The early parts of day 62 were still spent flying around and leveling up my drake, and I got it to about 20k health and 2,500 stamina. And I'm gonna use this one I'm currently on as a basic travel drake, and the other one I'll level into health, and it'll be the boss drake. But since I now have a really good travel drake, I decided to go into the artifact cave in the radiation zone, which is incredibly easy to acquire since I could just turn invisible and nothing would attack me. Day 63, I farmed a bunch of wood with my rat for the forge to burn into charcoal, and I set up my megalodes in the most efficient way possible for me to get the most fertilized eggs. I returned to the Glowtail cave on day 64 since I no longer had the artifact because my character got deleted into oblivion. And as you can see, it didn't go too well. And I even ran back in naked a few times just to see my stuff wasn't there. Dude! 
Where's my Megalo? So I came back with another Megalo and successfully made my way back into the cave, but my Megalo and Bulldog were gone. And they didn't die because they'd be in the tribe log, but they just weren't there. And this was probably the second closest time of me nearly putting a hole in my wall. In 65, I logged back in because I wasn't filled with rage and left the glow tail without even getting the artifact. And I repaired my gear when I got back to the base and claimed a bunch of baby Megalos that somehow hatched without me being even in render distance. And I also spent day 66 at my base working with Megalos. The first half of day 67 was also spent racing Megalos. But once I got to a good stopping point, I farmed some stone and almost farmed some flint. It's time to really start ramping up the gunpowder production as I'm already two thirds done with this 100 days. But the actual reason I didn't farm the flint because I noticed it was 90% night. That means it's the safest possible chance for me to go out on the surface right now. So I quickly jumped home on my crab, grabbed my drake, and then began flying around the closest service entrance. So yeah, I didn't get anything good, but it's 90% night and 10% day, so the days go super fast, so by the time I got out to another surface entrance, it was already night again. Once again, nothing really great, but definitely better than last night. But I guess I have one more night of it being 90% night, so hopefully I have some better luck this time. Yeah, I didn't have better luck. Anyways, I finally did that flint run and crafted a bunch of spark powder. And then later on, when it was done crafting, I crafted a buttload of gunpowder. Rockwell was gonna stand no chance. I hope. Day 71 through 73, I raised the rest of the megalos I need for the boss fight. And if you're running about the stats, after leveling them, they all had around 35k HP and 700 melee. I made sure to give them a lot of health because I'd rather them stay alive longer than do more damage. Day 74, I began the day getting explorer notes and killing spy notes to level up my rock drake I would use for the boss fight. And I got their drake to about 40k HP and 1500 stamina. The goal of the drake is just to tank and stay alive so I can move around fast in the boss. And I also looted a purple drop and I got a pretty bad shotgun that won't really cut it for the boss fight, but a shotgun is better than no shotgun. And when I returned to my base, I crafted a holoscope for the shotgun and did a small stone run. Day 75, and I think it's time I get myself a reaper. So I crafted up a small stone trap from Captain Fat Dog that I'll link in the description if I remember. There is no way he is going to remember. And here you can see me finding the first reaper I came across. Oh my god. Yeah, it's it's more than good enough for me. So I quickly built the trap, led the reaper in, and bit the Aberrant Giga Help until me. she glowed red. And I think we all know what happens next. Luckily, killing the Reaper got all the XP I need to get an extra 75 levels on the baby. So I quickly built a small stone shack to give birth to the Reaper and then let it eat me. And it was green and orange, so obviously I named it Carrot. I then proceeded to spend the day raising Carrot, and when he was fully grown, I ran up and down the green zone massacring Spinos for levels. Day 77, I got back to my base from killing Spinos, and Carrot was kind of overpowered now. I love boosted single player stats. But moving on, it's 90% night cycle again, so the next three days were dedicated to looting drops on the surface, and I got much, much better loot this time. Yeah. Oh my god. 880, and now that I have pretty much everything I need for the boss fight, it's time to start actually getting stuff to start the boss fight. And I needed basically everything except the Alpha Carquinos Claw, Rock Trick Feathers, and that one artifact that I don't know the name of. And while I was on my way to the Glowtail Cave, I found the Basilisk I tried to kill, but it didn't come out of the floor for whatever reason. But no big deal, I still got the artifact in the Glowtail Cave by the end of the day. Day 81, I crafted myself a scuba tank and then got the last artifact in the... I don't know what cave this is called, but it looks really cool. In the morning of day 82, I was back out in the radiation zone killing a Reaper. I only needed a few more Reaper pheromone glands, so it wasn't that bad. And after that, I started getting bullets crafting, and yeah, that's pretty much all I did. I was on the hunt for Basilisk on day 83. These oversized snakes are literally everywhere when you're not looking for them, but as soon as you start searching for them, they all disappear off the face of the earth. So I only managed to kill a few before the end of the day. Day 84 was basically just a carbon copy of day 83. I just spent it killing a few Basilisks. By this time, my Megalo army has pretty much eaten through all the food on my base, so I did a meat room with my Reaper in the morning of day 85. And after that, I queued some more bullets to craft and eventually found an Alpha Basilisk. I guess Ark is trying to make up for being mean to me earlier and not giving me any basilisks. I thought I'd level up my Megalo a bit by killing this Alpha Carquinos. Oh, nah. That is level 162. But yeah, I don't think I could kill that with just one Megalo. And in the night of day 86, I started looking for an Alpha Reaper back on the surface, but I didn't find any sign of one. Well, after doing a Dino Wave on day 87, yes, I'm allowed to do those, I found one. And with two May boosted Megalos, it died really, really fast. Hopefully, just like Rockwell will. So I think I have all the boss tributes I need now besides Nameless Venom, which I'll get before the boss. So yeah, now it's time to just start preparing my gear. I got some red gems and crafted another gas collector so I can repair my hazbat. And for the next few days, I always had bullets crafting, so don't be surprised when I face Rockwell with 17,000 bullets. Just kidding, I'll only have like 1,700, which is still a lot. Day 89? 
eating a sub from Penn Station. Well, day 90, I was actually productive. I added piping from the water below and an industrial cooker to make some medical brews. I'm actually really surprised I made it this long without having medical brews. Usually if I don't have them by day 50, I'm like this. Day 91, I farmed flint for spark powder for more gunpowder. Then farmed berries for more medical brews, crafted megalo saddles, and crafted crop pots so I could safely get my megalos down to the terminal. Day 92 was super boring. I had to saddle up all my megalos and did sit at one of those plants all day waiting for them to heal. But if Aberration didn't have these plants, I don't think my dinos could get the full HP before day 100. I spent the next two days throwing out my megalos out of their cryopod at the terminal. I didn't want to cross them because I honestly didn't know how long they would take to wake up, so I decided to play it safe. And I also put all the tributes I had into the terminal, which I would soon learn to be a big mistake. Day 95 in, time for that mistake. When I went back up to my base to grab the last few megalos and everything I needed for the boss, my items despawned into the terminal. I'm guessing it's the same glitch that happened to my megalo and bulldog like 20 days ago. Oh, I would record, please fix this. Aberration's my favorite map, but I haven't exactly had a good a time during these 100 days. Especially since my character got deleted, and now I only have the island ascension. Anyways, now that I'm done ranting, I had to summon all my tributes back in. Day 96. Okay. Day 97, I farmed all the nameless venom I need to start the boss, and more for my rock break since they heal health when you force feed it to them. But anyways, I'm starting this boss now. I basically be in this map, and I'm worried if I spend another day here, my whole world will get deleted because of the way it's been going for me lately. What? Oh my god. Ha! Drop your guard. 